I'm at school and it's lunchtime. As on every day, I stand in line with too many others and allow a kind but weathered lady with a hairnet to dump slop onto my plate. I pay for the slop and take it over to the round table that my friends and I always sit at. I shovel the food into my mouth and chew mechanically until there's nothing on my plate. And then, laughing at an unfunny joke one of them has said, I excuse myself and walk carefully to the restroom at the far end of the school, which is usually empty. I lock myself in a stall and bend over the porcelain. I stick two fingers down my throat. All the food I just ate comes up, as well as some of the orange juice and cereal I had for breakfast. After it's all out, I feel much better, and I go limp a bit because I feel so good. A voice comes into my head, a voice I know too well. It says, Why don't you kill yourself, Anya? Go away. I don't want to play your games today. Why, but you just did. Don't tell me you like throwing up your food. I stay silent, scrunching up my face to make it go away. I asked you, why don't you kill yourself? I need an answer. If you can't give me an answer, it means you should kill yourself. The tiles are white. If you get way up close to them, you'll see their speckles. The mortar is more clearly speckled. Please go away. What have I done to you? Don't play dumb. Who is it that stays up until four every morning watching stupid videos? Who is it that shuts themselves up in their room all day? Who is it that stays home from school? Who is it that doesn't laugh, that doesn't smile? Who is it that's moody? That's not me. That's all you. Now give me an answer. Why don't you kill yourself? I'm not going to ask it again. I, I, I don't know. So then, why don't you just kill you today? Answer me, Anya. I, I don't know. I'll tell you what. You're walking home from school today, aren't you? Right. So I'll give you till the end of the day. And when you cross the bridge over the freeway, I'll ask you again, why don't you kill yourself? And if you don't have an answer by then, you best believe you're going to die. Someone comes into the restroom. As I scramble to my feet, a few tears fall from my eyes and speckle the tiles. I come out of the stall and nearly bump into the girl who just came in. I was too late in getting off the floor. She noticed and sees my red eyes. Are you okay? I look at her too hard. I don't know what to say. If I tell her the truth, it'll just get more messy. But I want to tell her. I have to tell someone. I've been better. The girl's wearing a nice little jacket and a scarf. She's pretty, but not or extraordinarily so. I'm Aisha. What's your name? I'm Anya. Anya, why don't you just stay put while I pee? Uh, I want to be your friend. She goes into the stall and it's silent, but for the soft trickle of her urine. When she comes out, she puts a hand on my shoulder and goes over to the sink and washes her hands and then asks me, Are you on lunch now? Yeah. I'm in class. I have lunch next hour. I look around awkwardly. Give me your number. She takes out her phone. Do you have any open periods? No. I type my number into her phone. I have eighth hour open. Hmm. Well, I'm sure my teacher will understand if I'm a little late. Let's go for a walk. So I follow her to the theater. Usually it's locked, but Aisha knows a special door. Sometimes I take my boyfriend here. She, she winks. We sit in the very back. So, is it food stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Well, I don't get it, but I have friends who struggle with that. I mean, we've all got our own shit. I'm bipolar. There's a silence. It's very quiet in the theater. There's only the music of the heating system, but I don't know about that yet. I think the hardest part about having a disorder or whatever is feeling embarrassed to talk about it openly or ask for support, as if the disorder makes you an inferior person. <laughs> yeah. Would you maybe want to hang out sometime? Sure. When? We could go to the library and study. What grade are you in? I'm a sophomore. Oh, 
I'm a junior, so maybe studying wouldn't work that well. Well, we could just go for a walk or go to the art center or go to the pool at the Y. Sure, Aisha, just text me. Are you going to be okay? I don't know. Can I give you a hug? Sure. I close my eyes and hold out my arms. But just as soon as I feel her arms, thick inside the sleeves of her jacket, wrap around my body, I hear the voice return, snarling, How do you know she's not just a figment of your imagination? As I begin to respond indignantly that I should know what a hug feels like, Aisha's arms slacken their hold on me until I can't feel them at all. I open my eyes and find myself alone in the theater. I sigh and walk back to the cafeteria where my friends haven't noticed my absence. Anya was absent for her afternoon classes even though her body was there. Now her last class of the day just got out and she's walking to her locker to pick up her math and science books. She slams the locker shut and starts walking to the back door which is closer to the pedestrian bridge she takes to go home than the front door. When Aisha spots her and says, Hey, Anya, can I walk with you? Anya waits till Aisha draws near, then whispers, Are you real? Is that voice in your head real? Anya looks at her, dumbstruck. After a few moments, Aisha laughs and takes Anya by the arm, leading her toward the back doors. Her hair is voluminous and bounces slightly as she walks, grinning happily. Anya lets herself be mesmerized by Aisha's hair. Her crazy thoughts fade to a soft static. It's gray outside and there are kids milling about, laughing, skateboarding, flirting, and the like. When we get far enough away from everyone, Aisha turns to me and, in her bubbly voice, says, But you know, the question your voice keeps asking you is valid. Why don't you kill yourself? I stop in my tracks, looking at Aisha with a horrified face. She laughs. Come on, don't be like that. Let's keep walking. I'm cold. But I don't know if I can trust her. She grabs my arm and pulls me along. What? Why are you scared of that question? Be because I, I don't have an answer. Well, until you figure it out, that voice is going to keep tormenting you. We're at the foot of the bridge now. I can hear the roar of the freeway. I raise my voice to say, Well, how would you answer that question? Aisha looks at me with a friendly smile. Let me tell you a story. Once I was a little girl living in a bad neighborhood in Chicago with my mom and no daddy. Well, later, when I was like 10, my mom finished her degree and found a nice man and they moved up here. But back then it was bad. We didn't ever know if we'd make it to tomorrow. Well, one day I was out playing and I found this purple glass bottle lying on the ground. And I'd never seen a purple glass bottle, so I picked it up. And there was nothing really in it, just some dust and stuff, and it didn't really smell like anything. So I took it home and put it in my room on the windowsill. Except my mom and I were sharing a room then, because we only had one bedroom, and it was nasty in that apartment. Sheesh! I still remember having to wear shoes everywhere I went, because there'd be bugs crawling around, and I had to wear footsie pajamas all year round, even in summer, so nothing would crawl inside me while I was sleeping. But I bet I still couldn't help swallowing some nasty bugs. Anyway, I put this purple glass bottle on the windowsill. And one day, I found a rose. A white rose on the street. And I think it had been stepped on, but I still thought it was nice. So I picked it up and brought it home. And I took it home and put some water in the purple glass bottle. And put the rose in the purple glass bottle. And I replaced it on the windowsill and it looked nice. Then one day, I was walking down the street, coming home from school, and I found this nice rainbow bracelet. You know, the kind with the little beads in different colors? And I thought it looked so nice, even though it was a little dirty. So I took it home and glued it on the front of my purple glass bottle with the rose in it. Well, not long after that, my mom noticed the purple glass bottle with the white rose and the rainbow bracelet, and she told me, Aisha, that's so nice. Did you make that? And I said yes, and we both stared at it for a little while, and my mom put her arm around me, and I could tell that she was really tired. And I felt a little sad that my body was too small then for me to really hug her and give her a lot of love. And then, not long after that, my mom was chasing around a little mouse, trying to kill it with a hammer, and the mouse climbed onto the windowsill and knocked down the purple glass bottle, and it fell to the ground and broke, and the water spilled out, and the rose... 
which by then was turning kind of brown, lost most of its few remaining petals, and the rainbow bracelet sort of broke off. Well, it didn't really break off, but the parts of the bottle that it was glued to broke off, so it basically broke off. So I went and got a towel and cleaned up the water, and my mom gave up trying to kill the mouse and cleaned up the pieces of the purple glass bottle with a broom, and took me to the corner store, where she bought me an ice cream sandwich and a bottle of tea for herself, and we sat on the bench of the bus stop together until we finished our snacks, and then we walked home, and my mom read a Dr. Seuss book to me, and then we went to bed. We're halfway across the bridge. Aisha had told the story very quickly. I look at her and say, Sorry, but why did you tell me that? When Aisha looks at me, her face is changed. Now she wears the mask of Elof the meth head, with his cheeks all pockmarked and sunken, with missing teeth and with desperately fiending eyes. She cackles and growls in the voice. No, first you tell me why you shouldn't die right now. I try to run away, but the distance to the other side of the bridge grows in proportion to the extent of my hysteria, such that after a few minutes of breakneck running, I collapse at Aisha's feet, still in the middle of the bridge. All the students who normally walk the bridge have seemingly disappeared. I don't know what's going on. She kicks me. Get up! I look at her from the ground. The concrete is the standard light gray, almost beige, with a bunch of different colored shards sticking out of the surface. The clouds are too thick to distinguish any one cloud from one another. I keep lying there. Get up now! She kicks me again. You've lain long enough! But I give up. I won't get up. The pavement vanishes, and I fall in the path of the incoming cars. Anya! It's time to wake up. It's 7.03.